Hello to everyone watching today and thanks for tuning in. I'm Assemblywoman Megan Daly representing the 1st Assembly District, which encompasses the northeastern corner of California, nine counties and 25,000 square miles. I hope everyone who is watching are well and safe. I, mean, I know that has been difficult to stay positive and think about the future and how we'll continue to normal after this, after this pandemic passes. That's why I want to start highlighting great work that's happening throughout AD1 and share some information from different members of our community. And I'm very happy that we have Jake Mangus here with us today on behalf of the Reading Chamber of Commerce. Hello, Jake. Hey, Assemblywoman Dolly, thank you so much for uh, having me on. It's, uh, it really is an honor and uh, it, it kind of fills my tank up again at this time. So thank you. Well, we're very thankful. The Reading Chamber of Commerce um, convenes leaders and influence and a catalyst of business growth. And Jake is a champion for building stronger community. The chamber represents more than 900 businesses in the greater Reading area, which I think is amazing. Amplifies the voice of business and working with the public sector to benefit the economic growth. Jake has been the president and CEO of the Reading Chamber since 2016 and is doing an amazing job. Jake is here to answer the important questions that we all have during this um, pandemic and how we're going to plan ahead for what the new normal may be in, and what this looks like moving forward. So thanks again, Jake, for joining us. And I'm going to give you an opportunity for opening comments if you have anything, and then we'll move into some questions. Sure. I think uh, I've got to seize this moment right now. I have a, I have a kudos to you story that I want to start with. And you, you know what, the, you may not even know what's coming, but um, I got a phone call a couple of days ago from a business owner, not currently in the Chamber of Commerce uh, at the time anyway, I think he is now. And he said, I was he was having a hard time with his credit union because the credit union is not signed up with the paycheck protection program, mm -hmm. which we can get into in a little while. And so they told him go seek other uh, funding sources. So all of the banks right now are uh, taking care of their customers only. So he kind of ran into a brick wall there and he thought, you know, I served my country. I, I was a veteran at 18 years of age, or I was a, a, a soldier at 18 years of age. 50 years old now, I'm going to call my elected officials for the first time in my life. So he picks up the phone, he calls your office, and you answered the phone. There wasn't even an administrative assistant or anything. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and he was so blown away by that. But what made it even better is that you helped him by connecting him with, um, actually with, I believe, with, with Brian Dolly's office as well, and mm -hmm. uh, connected him with another bank that was able to get him the funding that he needed uh, at this time for his business. So that's talk about, you know, your elected officials working on your behalf. And I think that's one of the beauties of this district is that we're small enough now uh, still that we, we know our elected officials uh, on a personal basis and you can be so personable with us and, um, and really take the time to, to, uh, to serve us. So thank you for that. Wow. Thank you. That's a great testimony. And my staff and I have been working and we're available. The phones are being answered. Emails are being returned. Some of us, uh, more me, and living very remotely, we have some technical <laughs> troubles, but we're up. We can Zoom, which is just a miracle um, in Big Valley. So I'm excited to, to talk to you today. And so what are some, what are you finding to be the most pressing needs for our local businesses at this time? Well, as you mentioned, we serve hundreds of businesses across the greater Reading area. And the first thing we said as a staff was, we're going to prove to this community of business that we, uh, that we are important, that we are worthy of investment. Let's, let's show our, our members that their investment with us is, is worth every penny. So we called every one of them and we said, what is your greatest challenge at this time? Mm -hmm. And they let us know resoundingly that it's funding. They need access to capital. And we figured that would be the case because the car fire gave us a little precursor and some experience that even businesses that were shut down for only two days um, during the car fire time were in trouble of surviving. And it just really brings to light the fact, the reality that a lot of our small businesses don't have the luxury of having reserves. They kind of live hand to mouth, month to month. Mm -hmm. So any kind of a disruption in revenue can really hurt. And I think, you know, America's heartbeat is really small business. And so 
uh, for us to step up as a chamber and work with the California Chamber of Commerce, the US Chamber, and all of our brothers and sisters across the country uh, in chambers to get funding to businesses. That's, that's what we needed to do. So uh, that's what we set our, our minds to right away. That's great. I'm sure they were uh, very thankful and maybe a little surprised to get those phone calls, those individual yeah. phone calls. You're right. Um, one of the things that we, we talk about in the chamber world is don't let your only interaction with your member be the renewal invoice that comes right. in the thing. Are you, are you going to pay us again? You know, right. so we we've got to show yeah. them that we're worth it. That's great. Yeah. So what funding does exist for businesses at this time that you found through this? I'm sure you're doing a lot of research and... Yeah. Well, well, as you, you're, you're fielding a lot of calls too. And so we, we become very uh, close partners with the Small Business Administration. And on the local level, it's the um, Small Business Development Center, the SBDC of Shasta Cascade. Joe Rodola, David Walker over at the office on Airport Road in Reading have done a fabulous job in fielding calls. So on the SBA side, uh, there is the, uh, the, they're called EIDLs, Economic Injury Disaster Loans. And uh, we know that nonprofits, as well as for-profit businesses, and a lot of different classifications from sole proprietors um, uh, to independent contractors even, are eligible to receive low interest loans to help bridge them through this time. And then there's a second loan component through the SBA that is actually more of a grant. It actually is a grant, and it's up to uh, a $10,000 um, advance to businesses uh, so that they are able to uh, keep things going, keep their uh, their employees, if it makes sense for them to mm -hmm. do so, uh, and it, as they wait for the decision from the SBA, which can take a while. So, so there's that side of the column. If you looked at the other side of the page, uh, the other column and the, on the other side of the page, it would be the PPP program, and that's the Paycheck Protection Program. Mm -hmm. We were so pleased to see Congress uh, come to an agreement and have President Trump sign that CARES Act, the $2.2 trillion, and then $350 billion of that to small business. And uh, it, it looks like we may need to go back and ask for more because of the demand. What's on that side, I guess I can go into the other stuff later, would be on the PPP. The beauty of that is it, again, is a loan that is equal to roughly two and a half months of your payroll expenses. And there are included in that some other allowable overhead like utilities and paying your your rent and stuff like that uh, that can be convertible from a loan into a grant essentially a forgivable loan if used properly so we've been fielding a lot of calls from our members and our non-members that have said uh, you know how can we get involved in this program or is this really a forgivable loan you know so we're, we're able right. to say well first of all you run a, you want to contact your CPA you're going to want to talk to, um, you know, your, your personal banker who knows your circumstances and everything and assess the situation and make sure that you read the fine print. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, it looks to be up to 100% forgivable, which is a wonderful um, opportunity for businesses right now. So are your members and your businesses, are they... Um... Are they navigating the process, you know, the application process okay? Are they coming up against obstacles? Uh, what, what we're finding is that the application process itself, when you get to the application and you get to actually fill in your information, it's not too arduous, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge that they're experiencing is the mad dash from businesses to banks looking for that funding. And the local banks are being overwhelmed right now. Um, I heard from one local bank that they had set a lending cap of $100 million for their customers. Now that sounds like a big number until you realize that you're talking about, you know, a thousand businesses reaching out at one time, trying to get access to that capital. And that's been the case all over town. So we're hearing some businesses that have shut off their uh, lending at this time and they have a waiting list for their customers only. Um, we, we say to those that have hit those stumbling blocks, continue to shop around, see if there are some of, some of the other banks, particularly those that have a national presence that might have a greater capacity to help you at this time. Mm -hmm. That could, could um, be the way forward for you. Um, it's our hope that perhaps 
if more funding is needed, if Congress appropriates more funds to small businesses, that part of it will be to help with the streamlining of that process. On the good, the good side on, of all of this, we have begun to hear stories of local companies that have started to receive funds. So that's, that's oh, very that's, exciting to hear. That's that. very good news. Yeah. So the chamber, I, um, speaking of dues, aren't you offering some, because one of the questions is, what is the Reading Chamber doing to help its members right now at this time? Sure. Um, so in addition to just being a, a shoulder to cry on or a support <laughs> system uh, for, uh, for businesses, we also thought about how, for our current members, we don't, we will not drop any current member who says that um, they can't stay with us because of an, an inability to pay at this time. Uh, we think that the right thing to do is to stand with the business community during this time of great challenge. So that led us to also take the bold step of offering a free 12 month membership to any business that's not currently a part of the chamber. We've never done that before and it's working. I mean, in the first week, we've added 100 businesses to the chamber. And, and as wow. you know really well, I mean, it, the greater uh, in number that we are, the greater our influence, uh, the stronger our voice. And uh, it's, it's really exciting for me to be able to represent businesses in large quantity in the North State and to provide them with some help right now and to let them know that there aren't any strings attached you're gonna get all of the service that a paying member will get for the next 12 months. And it's our hope that that helps them through this tough time. And perhaps it earns a, an investment from them in the future and what we do. So what is so what are you guys up to as far as your membership? Okay, so our, our total membership now is in excess, well, the 900 number, it's probably more like 930 now. Wow. And that's, that's great. Last week we were at 830, so we've really <laughs> added uh, to our numbers. And I, and as long as there is a shelter in place order uh, active, we will be offering this special. So um, in addition to that, for our current members, we're going to, uh, we're going to work with them, as I mentioned, and that that looks like different payment options, but also a 90 day deferment on their membership dues with us, uh, with the hopes that this will help get them past our current challenge. I think that what you're going to see, though, is after COVID-19 has passed over us, um, there's going to be a road to recovery, and there's going to be a role for the chamber to help businesses mm -hmm. on that road. And it seems like in rural parts of the uh, the state, we seem to be kind of slow to warm but quick to cool, and right. uh, and then as other metro areas come back from this. It's going to take us probably a little bit longer. So we are excited about finding new partners uh, to, to help with that comeback story. I mean, it's all about getting, getting the North State back to work, I would say. Right. And so I, my next question is, when we do, we're scheduled at this point to be back in Sacramento May 4th. And we're having lots of conversation, lots of calls throughout the district on those challenges that people are facing, um, businesses, individuals. What is um, something that I could take back to share with my colleagues in the assembly? You know, we're in business, so we have employees, and I, you know, we know how hard that is to do to do business in the state of California. There's a lot of regulations and red tape. So, um, I'm I'm really interested in, as we gather information, like what is the what is the main sentiment I can take back to my colleagues when we start to talk about how we're going to open back up, how we're going to get back on track. Like what what does businesses really need to do their to provide not just do their work, but to provide for their communities. Well, I think number one, I'm it's encouraging to see uh, no matter what your political persuasion is uh, in the, on the national level, the coming together to rally around that stimulus package was pretty impressive to see. I think this, by the same token, we could see that happen at the state level as well, rallying for uh, businesses. And uh, what does that look like? To me, it's anything that can help to um, give Main Street USA a chance of success. And that's pretty broad. I mean, it, it could be... Um, <laughs> tax credits um, for, for hiring, for example. Um, I know that you had presented to our a board and our, our political action committee a bill that, that was in the works uh, and then COVID-19 happened. So I'm sure that there's probably been delays in all that process. But um, 
the the other thing that I was thinking about was we're partnering right now with the Smart Business Resource Center. They're funded by the Department of Labor and also the EDD, and they have programs that are longstanding where it helps employers uh, get employees for half the cost or even have 100% of their cost paid for if it's you know like a someone who's been laid off for a period of time uh, perhaps an internship of job training opportunity during times of low unemployment I would say that the talent pool in those programs might be a bit shallow uh, however when you're dealing with a higher unemployment situation like we are in right now and likely you know entering into when we try to come back from all of this that talent pool probably be deeper. And I think that those types of partnerships for us would make a huge difference for businesses. If they can offset all or a lot of their staffing costs to ramp up again, I think that would be a big help. So those are a couple of thoughts off the top of my head. No, that, that's really good because that, you know, my bill proposal was, um, you know, young people basically to be into the workforce. And so we've hired a lot of, a lot of first time employees over the years and they take a little more training a little more um just support and so but you're right the the pool of people that will be looking for jobs is going to be greater and um but that's that's really great advice you know thing for me to take back um how can we be supporting our local um businesses right now i know we're here in big valley we're doing takeout once a week excellent um we're talking about you know gift certificates things like that that we could be helpful um maybe even paying forward i'm i'm looking forward to having my hair done again eventually so i mean maybe i could have a credit with my um stylist so what are some ideas that people have been doing well i think a lot of that it's um those businesses that are essential um making sure that you can direct your dollars in the local community as much as possible. And so the, the restaurants, of course, the takeout and delivery, the grocery the delivery services that we're seeing pop up. Um, also the like the local hardware store, being able to go down and, and get what you need versus going online and buying that from someplace out of the area. I think that really is important right now. The idea that you can buy a gift card to one of these businesses that maybe is non-essential, the small retail shop, the hair salon, whatever it might be, buy that gift card now, get your hair done later, but they get the revenue now. So that's mm -hmm. a really great strategy. So that's, I, I'm glad to hear that that's happening in Big Valley as well, not surprisingly. Uh, so um, also, I think one thing that's wonderful about a silver lining to all of this, let's say, is perhaps in these times of challenge as you know, we're, we're communicating in this new way right now. Right. Uh, there are new ways to do business where you might actually gain some insights into how I can continue to do business and gain some efficiencies, improve our systems internally, you know, our, our communication, how can we do that better? Are we really losing productivity by working remotely or has that actually ramped up as we've narrowed our focus to what's the most important thing we do right now? You know, so I think that there are those lessons, also the uh, finance side. And even though I mentioned before that the reality is that most of our small business community, they don't have the luxury of reserves. Maybe there can be a, a newfound uh, goal to put money aside for the slowdowns that happen in economic cycles. So I've seen a lot of fun things happening in Reading parades with for birthday kids and people sewing masks for, you know, essential workers, frontline employees. Can you um, highlight some of the, what's going on? And I know you guys do a great job of highlighting those, what we need right now, hope. I keep telling um, Rosalind, hope rises, hope rises. We just keep, yeah. you know, trying to talk about the positive as much as possible. So maybe you could share some of those stories with us. That's right. Um, well, I can say that it is in these times of challenge that we see people coming together. I would say that on the private side, a private industry, it's been neat to see the um, creativity and the ingenuity of um, From the Hearth, as an example. John Dix mm -hmm. is the name of the owner of this chain of restaurants uh, in the Reading area and beyond. And anyway, he, he decided he would get into the grocery delivery business. And I think that that was pretty impressive, the way that he said, we're going to do this. And within 24 to 48 hours, they were all of a sudden a grocery delivery service. Pretty amazing to see that happen. 
on the public side to see all of these different agencies working together has been very impressive. As, as you mentioned, the chamber being a convener of leaders and influencers, it's wonderful anytime you can get all of those minds in the room uh, rallying around a common objective. It's amazing how that trajectory gets a lot steeper as far as on the road to a solution. So. Uh, those would be two examples uh, right off the top of my head. And then all of the other things that you you mentioned as far as like people uh, sewing masks, the Reading Fashion Alliance has taken on um, sewing gowns and, um, and masks. Uh, even my wife is doing that now. And then, um, and then yeah, Reading, Pol Reading Police Department is doing drive-bys uh, in a good way. They are, they're okay. driving by and they are uh, like, so my son uh, turned 10 a couple days ago. And I saw a news story that RPD is going by and wishing happy birthday um, wishes to kids who are, you know, sheltering in place. So I reached out and they said, okay, we'll be there in two hours. So they come around the corner and there were four SUV RPD uh, vehicles with their, uh, you know, lights blaring as well as the sound and everything. The guy gets on his um, loudspeaker and he goes, um, happy birthday, Kobe. Happy birthday. And I said, how was that, buddy? And he goes, I thought I was going to faint because he thought <laughs> we were coming to get him. But um, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and he'd be happy with a garbage truck coming by and doing that, too. But so we live in a wonderful community. And I have no doubt that we're going to rally. And um, and I think the 4th of July is going to be very special this year for all of us. As we've said goodbye to, uh, or at least we'll see you next year, to Cool April Nights and the Rodeo. Right and the, the uh, Red Bluff Roundup and all these other community events that we just can sometimes take for granted, but we certainly look forward to them. So our hope at the chamber is that all of these events are gonna come back with a vengeance as people are gonna be so excited to get together again and, um, and spend their money in the community, hopefully, and help these local businesses. Right, and I think it definitely has one thing, you know, in our household that we've been talking a lot about with, with the boys back home and, you know, constant milk and eggs and things. <laughs> The, the giants are back. Yeah. And so um, you really, you're very thankful for your local grocery store and where you can order a pizza once a week. You know, sometimes we, we take that for granted when we think we can just run there every day and grab something. But, you know, our local communities and our local businesses are who sponsor our little league teams who buy the FFA animals at the fair. So I think through this whole thing, we're, we're going to appreciate more our small businesses and what they do, the jobs they provide and the, the services and just, you know, build them up some more after this is all this passes. So thank you so much for joining me today. I just, Absolutely. you do such an amazing job. And I just want to offer this, if you have any closing comments or make sure you plug your website and any ways we can get a hold of you if we yep. need anything. Sure. If businesses across the North State need any assistance with any of the things that we talked about, they can always go to ReadingChamber.com. They can also email me at Jake at ReadingChamber.com. Those are probably the two easiest ways to get a hold of us other than following us on Facebook and Instagram. And I would say uh, thank you, Assemblywoman Dolly, for um, everything that you've done. Uh, you're off to a great start in your role, and we enjoy working with you. Thank you. So this video and um, the other video, we're doing a series, will be uploaded to my website. So just thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you learned some very helpful information from Jake and his great organization. Um, so just God bless you and your families. Please stay safe and stay home. And we're all in this together. So have a great afternoon and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thanks a lot.